The University of Central Florida Arboretum began in 1968. In those years, field trips to the Wakaiba Basin and other nature parks were being cut due to the expense of traveling. Biology professor Hank Whittier worked alongside his wife and volunteers to carve out trails and gardens of the wooded area on the east side of campus into the Arboretum. Central Florida is an ideal place to cultivate, collect, and research plants due to its overlapping subtropical and temperate climates. It represents the furthest south many northern plants can grow and the furthest north many southern plants can grow. This creates a tension zone that is ripe territory for plants to exhibit unique characteristics for growing, collecting, and studying. The land was also home to gopher tortoises. The gopher tortoise is a keystone species of the longleaf pine ecosystem that has been endangered since 1987. Their long underground burrows shelter over 350 species such as snakes, rabbits, and owls. Conserving the land on campus would protect this and other important native species from further encroachment. Whittier believed that the Arboretum would be a sanctuary for the state's disappearing flora. He envisioned a greenhouse, herbarium, office building, and amphitheater for teaching and weddings. Unfortunately, the Arboretum lacked basic resources even to maintain their sparse equipment. Furthermore, opening trails and digging banks required heavy machinery and full-time volunteer assistance to prune trees and clear trails. This need for more student involvement would lead the Arboretum to incorporate student workers through the Federal Work Study Program. In 1971, Mrs. A. E. Stocker posthumously donated an historic greenhouse to the Arboretum. It was called the Stockard Conservatory. Volunteers disassembled the structure, transported it to campus, and rebuilt it. Harry Butch Neal, a botany graduate and president of the Biology Honor Society, raised money to upgrade the conservatory with steel beams and wooden sides, saving 70% of the original glass. In 1983, the university officially recognized the Arboretum, adding it to the campus master plan and establishing it on 10 acres near the biology building. It would become part of the American Public Gardens Association. Professor Whittier continued to manage the preserve for 20 years with the aid of volunteers ranging across all backgrounds and ages. In 1988, the Arboretum expanded by 23 acres and the Friends of the Arboretum organization was established. On October 29th, the 20th anniversary was celebrated with the first Harvest Feast, which included 500 visitors and resulted in thousands of dollars of donations. In 1995, an additional 62 acres were added to the Arboretum, increasing the property to a total of 72 acres. In 2003, Director Hank Whittier retired and the university agreed to create a new position for the Director of the Arboretum, which would now be a full-time administrative faculty in the Department of Biology. One year later, in 2004, Dr. Martin Quigley, a plant ecologist and landscape architect, was appointed director just weeks before three hurricanes and a tornado devastated 90% of the original Arboretum vegetation. Dr. Quigley spent several years redeveloping the original site the plants needed to be removed because there was a conservation easement he was unaware of that restricted the type of vegetation that could be planted. 2005 would also be the first year prescribed burns were conducted. Most ecosystems in Florida require fire to maintain conditions for native plants and animals. Long-term fire suppression can lead not only to an increased risk of catastrophic wildfires, but also reduces habitat quality due to vegetation overgrowth. The Stockard Conservatory was dismantled in 2005 due to increased degradation since the 90s and hurricanes of 2004. The program was without a greenhouse until 2015 when a new greenhouse was constructed on the Arboretum site. In 2006, the Arboretum and engineering students built a wooden structure for a bonsai collection, later becoming a propagation house.
By 2007, Director Quigley worked with the University Facilities Department to create a new position in which the Arboretum Director also became Director of Campus Landscape and Natural Resources. This position broadened the role of the Arboretum Director to cover all aspects of design and planning of outdoor environments on campus and managing landscape operations and natural areas. Dr. Martin Quigley left his position in 2009 and in 2010, the university hired Dr. Patrick Bowen as the new director. Soon after Dr. Bowen arrived, the university worked with the St. John's River Water Management District to remove the conservation easement on the original arboretum site so that the area could again be replanted and developed as a vibrant outdoor space and botanical area for visitors, students, and staff to enjoy. The university initiated a new master plan for the site in 2019. The Arboretum continues to grow from its humble roots as a small parcel on the edge of campus into its indispensable role in cultivating and communicating the value and importance of the natural world in our lives. The core of the Arboretum can always be traced back to a favorite quote of Whittier's. <laughs>